is you. You're watching KPHO Phoenix. Now, your Midday News 5 with Roger Downey and Stu Tracy. He was kidnapped, held at gunpoint, and then managed to escape. Good morning, I'm Roger Downey. Topping your Midday News 5 this morning, Brad Perkinson escaped with his life, but one of his assailants did not, and now a second suspect is in police custody. News 5's Sergio Pedrosa is just back with the latest on this story. Sergio? That's right, Roger. One uh, suspect is dead, another is in custody, and a third is still unaccounted for. This story unfolded earlier this week when the alleged abductors went to Perkinson's home in a relatively quiet neighborhood in South Central Tempe. Perkinson owns a business in Tempe, and that business apparently became a target. Police tell us the suspects came to Phoenix from Colorado Springs, Colorado, with the intent to steal an expensive computer printer worth about $125,000. To do this, it's alleged the suspects rented a U-Haul, supposedly here in the valley, to store and transport the printer after the heist. But to do that, they needed someone to over ride the business security system. That someone was Brad Perkinson. The suspects managed to lure Perkinson out of his home by saying they had hit a dog and needed some help. Police report the suspects then attacked Perkinson, bound him with duct tape, and hauled him into the rental van. But not before Perkinson was able to grab a fanny pack which had a firearm in it. It was that gun that Perkinson used to shoot and kill one of his abductors and then escaped by jumping from the moving van. He called us. Uh, we, we got out to the scene where he was at. Uh, got him uh, the uh, medical attention. He was able to give us a description of the U-Haul vehicle. A couple hours later, we located the, the U-Haul vehicle uh, a couple miles away, about two miles away. And in the back of the vehicle was the body of uh, William Holoran. Holoran had been the suspect holding Perkinson at gunpoint. The suspect in custody in Colorado Springs is 33-year-old Donald Dwayne Latham. Tempe police are working with authorities in Colorado to bring Latham back to the valley, possibly in the next few days, while they, they seek a third suspect also in Colorado Springs. Uh, that third suspect is identified, and they believe he's still in the Colorado area. What about Perkinson's condition this morning? We understand from uh, Tempe police that he's doing better. He is giving detailed accounts of the alleged uh, or apparent kidnapping uh, over Labor Day and that he's provided details about the investigation. He still suffered some injuries, but apparently he's doing better now. All right, Sergio, thank you. John Barry Adams, the man accused of killing a Tempe woman and dumping her body in a canal, is in court this morning. Adams was arrested in August 1992 after he admitted killing Stacy Hendrickson. The young woman's body was found in a trash collecting bin along a Salt River Project canal two weeks earlier. Hendrickson had disappeared from her apartment several days before. She was a diabetic on medication, and an intensive search was launched for her. Adams has been awaiting trial on murder and other charges, and he is in Superior Court, where a hearing is underway, where he is expected to change his plea. Adams was charged after he admitted shooting Hendrickson accidentally during a struggle for his gun. He allegedly told police he was suicidal and had gone to the woman's apartment looking for her roommate, a friend of Adams. Investigators also reported that Adams told them he carried Hendrickson's body from her apartment and dumped it into the canal about a mile away. As of news time this morning, the matter was still before Judge David Grounds. We'll have more details later, perhaps during this newscast, but for sure tonight on, on your primetime news 5 at 9. Here's what's happening in other parts of your world this morning. Miami police have one suspect in custody and are looking for one or two others in the murder of a German tourist. 19-year-old Rickendahl Wiggins reportedly turned himself in. Travel agents are now advising Germans planning trips to the U.S. to avoid Miami. The Middle East peace process is suddenly in the fast lane. Israel and PLO officials have apparently worked out the language for mutual recognition. In Jerusalem, the Israeli inner cabinet has approved the pact. President Clinton is extremely happy the two sides have reached an accord. A Clinton spokeswoman reports the president remains open to hosting a signing ceremony on Monday if the Israelis and Palestinians are ready. The president has gone to Cleveland with Vice President Gore to stump for their whip government into shape campaign. Last night, Gore was a guest on The Late Show with David Letterman. While there, he demonstrated how the government safety tests ashtrays. All right, I'll do it first. <laughs> cool. Yeah. A la Letterman, Gore rattled off the top ten reasons it's good to be a vice president. Number one, his Secret Service codename, Buttafuoco. 
A new report made clear the air on what, was what has caused health problems for thousands of Gulf War veterans grouped loosely under Gulf War syndrome. A study by Michigan Senator Donald Regal's office claims Iraq may have touched, have launched at least two chemical toxin warheads at U.S. forces in Saudi Arabia. But according to the Pentagon, it has no evidence of that. How many people do you know who are unable to read? The Department of Education released a report, and the findings are shocking. It stated nearly 90 million Americans nationwide cannot complete the most basic of tasks. But here in the Valley, the Literacy Volunteers of America has seen enrollment increase. They're referred here through their employer to improve their skills for their job, being able to read a training manual, being able to fill out memos. And then we have some students that are here just to brush up on their math. And then we have other students that are coming to study for their, their GED examination. I come to this school to learn reading, uh, writing, more English. But uh, for me, you know, it's a lot of important to understand uh, the manuals, you know, for the vehicles. I've been separate for two years, and I try to find a job, but this is too difficult for me because I don't have the skills. And I think this is one of the wonderful programs. They gave me the opportunity to practice, to read and spell better, and speak better English. The reasons are many, but the results are the same. For the people we spoke with, literacy increases self-esteem, and it just may make them more marketable for jobs in this tight job market. One method of education, some believe, is more promising than a traditional classroom setting, and it is homeschooling. News 5's Marisa Hilari tells us why homeschooling is becoming so popular. Can you show me what you've done so far? Kyle and Sean Bridges are students. Their mother, Tracy, is their teacher. Their classroom is the kitchen table, and their school day goes something like this. Well, we get up and get dressed and make our beds, and then we have breakfast, and then after that, we do school. Starts at about 9 o'clock. They're taught everything, English, history, geography, and math, one of Sean's favorite courses. Long division, story problems, timetables. Sean and Kyle decided to attend a public school last year, but they came away disappointed. I learned that I, how much I really liked home school better than that, than public school. You don't have much time with your brother and your, and your parent. The brothers enjoy the advantages of homeschooling compared to being taught at a public school. The flexibility and just being with your family a lot more. And you have more time with your dad. Arizona's Education Association believes homeschooling is not in the best interest of the child. It excludes children. It separates them so that they don't learn about one another. There's also the the whole need to learn an appreciation for the arts, for music, uh, but to have athletic opportunities, uh, those are all very limited when you're, when you're in a home school. Not so for Sean and Kyle. Last Friday of every month we go bowling with a lot of the people and we have the speech class and field trips and so we're around kids a lot so it's not like we're isolated. But I went to football games and I went with my friends to high school stuff, but just the in-school type activities that I did miss. But I don't think it, you know, deprived me of any social skills or anything. Michelle Johnson is a junior at Arizona State University. She was homeschooled from 9th through 12th grade. I had a lot of work to do. I had to send it in on time. I didn't have the answers there to copy if I would want to, you know. I, it, was, it was a lot of work and, you know, it's paid off in college. How? In Michelle's grades. She has a perfect grade point average of 4.0. I just don't put a real high value on um, sen senseless things, pointless things. I don't, you know, I'd rather do well in school. Michelle learned those values from her parents. Sean and Bonnie Cotier are receiving the same kind of education from their mom and dad. We get the one-on-one -on -one attention of their parents and, and the different places we go to learn the experiences. So it's not just all school? No. It's character building and confidence building. So what exactly is required for a parent to homeschool in Arizona? 
All a parent has to do is fill out this affidavit and mail it to the Maricopa County School Superintendent's office. As of July 1st, new legislation no longer requires a parent to take a teacher proficiency exam. And the new law also requires less testing for students to evaluate their progress. Critics argue over this new legislation, which now makes it one of the most lenient in the country. Marisa Halare, News 5. The Maricopa County School Superintendent's Office receives about 20 affidavits of intent to homeschool every day. Success found its way to another group of students. A Glendale student is going to the White House. News 5's Dave Hampton reports it's all to explain why Cactus High School has been chosen as a drug-free model for schools across the nation. There's something different about Cactus High School, and it's not just the absence of graffiti. There's a sense of pride here among the student body, a pride that's made the school a national finalist for the Cardinal Challenge Award. It's sponsored by the Phoenix Cardinals and the Department of Education to recognize schools with outstanding drug prevention programs. Christina Kinnear will represent the school at the White House. She'll be explaining why the program works so well at Cactus because everybody really cares. We have a lot of pride in the school. If you look around, there's no graffiti. There's not a lot of trash. It's, it's, it's the way we like it. We, you know, um, that's how we want Cactus High School to be. Christina's colleagues agree there is something special about Cactus High. It's just like a nice school, nice environment, nice people. You know, there's never any problems here. There's never, you know, you hear about stuff at, oh, at other schools or something. You just never hear anything uh, that happens about the school unless it's positive. A lot of good people. Uh, there's a lot of friends close, except there's not as many groups of, of there's, there'll be like the football players and the cheerleaders and stuff, but they all mix together. There's not like certain type of groups and stuff. Since I've been here, it's been great. The faculty, the staff, it's a very good learning environment, good atmosphere. It's good. I like it. It's good. Nice atmosphere. Nice people. Principal Rob DeSealhorst explains the object is to build up students' self-esteem through special programs such as 51 different athletic teams or the 40 clubs, but a strict disciplinary code is also a big factor. Kids will push it just as far as you set the boundaries, and so we've elected to set the boundaries very low and treat the kids responsibly and expect them to live up to that responsibility, and if they don't, then there are consequences that must occur. Probably the best indication that the program works here at Cactus High is the dropout level. It's less than 4% of the student population. Dave Hampton, News 5. Representatives from the school will head to Washington on Monday for four days and a recognition ceremony for their accomplishment. We can now update an earlier story here on News 5. John Barry Adams has changed his plea to no contest this morning in a plea bargain involving the murder of Stacy Hendrickson. In agreeing to plead no contest to manslaughter and first-degree burglary, Adams has agreed to a 36-year prison sentence. The agreement was accepted in court despite the objections of the victim's mother, Connie Ewing. We'll have more tonight on your primetime News 5 at 9. Up next on your midday News 5, a winning weekend in store. Stu Tracy will have your Valley 5 cast. And will the controversial French abortion pill RU486 ever make its way to the U.S.? Making your way through the legal system can be very difficult, especially when you're involved in something as emotional as a divorce or a bankruptcy. Not only is your life in turmoil, but it can sometimes seem like there's no way out. At Austin Shaver and Jackson, we know how tough it is to get through a divorce or a bankruptcy. So we help guide you every step of the way. We also offer flat fees and structured payment plans to help you make it affordable. Call us to arrange for a free consultation. We'll help get you through. Sanderson Ford, year-end closeout sale, the best time. Ford Explorer, $13,993. Ford Taurus, $14,393. 2.9% financing. 1993 Ford Escort, best selection. Year-end closeout sale at Sanderson Ford, 6400 North 51st Avenue. Mr. Cassette. Oh, no, it's the landlady. Cassette's business is really good. I'm raising your rent. I won't pay more rent. You will pay more rent. I won't pay more rent. You will pay more rent or move out. <laughs> Don't worry, Howie. Everything will be all right. Good idea. A moving out sale. A million-dollar furniture liquidation. 
coats will be moving on down, moving on down the road. So get a price that's great, cause we're forced to liquidate. We're moving on down, moving on down the road. Well, if we can take what we've had the last two or three days, we can probably apply it to the next two or three days, right? You've got that, <laughs> except it was, it was more humid a couple days ago. And yesterday it really dried out, and that is going to continue for a while. Good. Glad to hear it. Well, yesterday it was dry. Relative humidity was as low as 9%, and the average dew point for the day, 44 degrees. Now, that's much drier than it has been. And this hour out at Sky Harbor at 11 o'clock, 97 degrees. Humidity 16%. Dew point now 43 degrees. The pressure's falling. A little breeze from the east. The visibility is 45 miles. And for the record, the high in Phoenix yesterday, 107 degrees. Low this morning was 79. Normals for today's date, 175. And the record high, 110 and 61. So be kind of flirting with that this afternoon. The air quality this morning, carbon monoxide readings in the good range. Ozone just into the moderate range. And that particular particulate level is uh, still missing. Much of the nation has fair skies this morning, although some thunderstorms have been popping up around sections of the east, particularly the southeast, over parts of Alabama and Tennessee this morning. Muscle Shoals, Alabama, had about a third of an inch of rain in just one hour for some of the heavier rainfall reported. Other thunderstorms have been developing along the Gulf Coast side of Florida. Those will be increasing this afternoon, extending on up into the Carolinas. Other uh, showers, mainly just cloudy weather, continuing through much of the Great Lakes area, moving on over into the northeast. Fair weather covers most of the central U.S., although there's this little band of clouds denoting a, a rather dry cold front. Not much happening from a precipitation standpoint, but it is much cooler behind this front, and it's also bringing a, a lot of wind through the region. 30 mile an hour winds have been common this morning with gusts around 40 in some cities, and it will be quite windy through the afternoon across the northern plains and on over into the Great Lakes area. Now, strong high pressure continues to dominate the weather over the west. It will be sunny with above normal temperatures again today. In fact, some cities may have some record highs like they did yesterday. This uh, high pressure is also keeping Arizona clear, dry, and very warm. Uh, around the state today, most of the monsoon moisture has been pushed out of Arizona, but it's not really very far away. It's down here over northern Mexico, and a little of that moisture may seep back into the southeastern corner of the state and set off a few thunderstorms as early as tomorrow and on Saturday. But the chance for any measurable rain will be quite slight. Otherwise, very little change is expected in the weather pattern through the weekend. Here are some of today's expected high temperatures around the nation. These are forecast highs, mostly in the 70s and 80s in the east. But it's going to be a warm one out west again today with highs well over 100 degrees in the interior valleys of the west. That's the expected high at Fresno today, and that's Medford, Oregon. Portland will be in the 90s. The uh, coolest in the nation this morning, West Yellowstone, Montana, and uh, Jackson, Wyoming, 33 degrees this morning. It wasn't a lot warmer at the Grand Canyon, our coolest in the state, 39 degrees. But it'll warm up to about 81 this afternoon. Today's highs will be about the same or slightly warmer than yesterday. And then tomorrow will be just about a carbon copy of today. The only thing that changes is the, the name at the top of the map. For Phoenix in the Valley, our forecast for the rest of today, sunny and very warm, around 107 for the high. Tonight, clear and mild, 78 at the airport, upper 60s in the coolest areas. And tomorrow, more of the same, 107 again. And the outlook through Monday, continued clear and dry, becoming a little cooler as we progress into next week. The high is down to about 101 by uh, Tuesday. The mornings have been just wonderful. Oh, yeah, it's cooling off at night because of that dry air. Okay, Stu, thanks. Still ahead on your Midday News 5, exercises that give you a complete workout for your health. When is a marriage not a marriage? Did you know Arizona has no laws about common law marriages? Many states don't. Cohabitation holds some interesting legal surprises. I'm Linda Turley. We'll tell you how those affect you and the law tonight at 9. Come on, move this! For unforgettable colors, it's always Revlon. Revlon Super Lustrous Lipstick. Yo. Rich fashion shades that last on your lips for up to six super lustrous hours. Come on. And Revlon's number one in long wearing nail enamel. Yo. Come on, move this. That shine, shine, shines. Shake that body for me. Revlon, unforgettable colors that last. That's why the most unforgettable women in the world wear Revlon. Your health report, brought to you by your Arizona Dodge dealer. This is the Dodge Cummins Turbo Diesel. This is its competition. When it comes to available diesel torque, payload, and towing power, nothing can touch it. Nothing from Ford, nothing from Chevy, nothing. 
And since you can get over $2,600 in option discounts, nothing beats our diesel savings either. Nothing. The intercooled Dodge Cummins Turbo Diesel. There's nothing like it. See it at your Dodge dealer now. What exercises are necessary for a total body workout? In your health this morning, News 5's Dr. Bob Lanier tells us aerobics alone might not be enough. Everyone knows that aerobics is great for the heart, but women may be leaving themselves open to other problems as they grow older. Now, here are some tips from the Woman's Heart Book. Swimming strengthens the muscles in the heart without the grinding impact of running. Now, that's why it's a popular activity for people with arthritis. The downside of this no-impact activity is that it does nothing to help build your bone density to protect you against osteoporosis, a so-called woman's brittle bone disease. For that, you need exercise with impact, such as walking or jogging or aerobics. But don't forget to build up your muscle strength. It's a popular misconception that only somebody like Arnold Schwarzenegger lifts weights, but a well-rounded exercise program almost always includes some easy weightlifting exercise. Don't worry. You won't end up looking like a female version of Arnold. Ask your family doctor for a program. I'm Dr. Bob Lanier. Tonight on your primetime News 5 at 9, how not to let stress get the best of you. Although President Clinton lifted a ban on the controversial abortion pill RU486, many people still don't want it here. An estimated 60,000 European women have used RU486 to terminate pregnancies. Another 12,000 have used it as a morning-after pill to prevent them. A U.S. scientific committee claims the European data show the drug is safe and effective for the purposes. Used as an abortive patient, this compound is significantly more uh, safe, I would say, than certainly having a surgical abortion. And I actually believe that it's probably safer than having a baby in terms of the risk to a woman. The concern here is that what we're going to do is experiment with American women on an abortive patient. And the concern here is that we are not using sound medical techniques to explore the possibilities of a drug, but a political agenda for abortion is pushing it forward. The committee recommends the Food and Drug Administration begin evaluations quickly. It also suggests looking into other possible uses of RU486 and related antiprogestins. There are indications this family of drugs could be used as contraceptives and for treatment of breast cancer and brain tumors. One congressman stated the soonest American women could have access to the so-called abortion pill is three years. Up next on your Midday News 5, is he a chip off the old block? Well, News 5's Bill Rose joins us with the Pink Panther son. He's just like his father. Bring your coupons to Avco Foods. We double them every day. Weekly, I must save about 35 to $40 in coupons. This week, save on tender pork spare ribs for just 99 cents a pound. Abco Foods' large grade AA eggs are 69 cents a dozen, and listen to this, golden ripe bananas, five pounds, only one dollar. Where I used to shop, I didn't get the double coupons, so I switched to Abco. And you should too, because Abco Foods doubles your coupons every day. No store makes saving easier than Abco Foods. That had always been the promise of Medicare, a promise made many years ago, at a time when the promise of affordable health care seemed obtainable. Thank you. I'm frequently asked to speak on health issues, and the question I'm often asked is where can seniors turn for affordable health care? The answer is in this booklet called Facts You Should Know About Medicare. It tells you how you can get low-cost prescriptions, physical exams, hospitalization, and more with no additional premiums beyond your monthly Medicare payments. The booklet's published by FHP, one of the oldest, most respected HMOs. Read it, and you'll see there's an organization that's kept the promise of affordable senior health care. For your complimentary copy of Facts You Should Know About Medicare, call 1-800-503-9933. You know, when you buy or build a new home, there are a lot of questions that need to be answered. One answer you need before you negotiate is loan approval. You need all the ammunition you can get. You need this, Home Loan Express. This is pre-approved home buying from Carl I. Brown. Brown is one of Arizona's leading mortgage lenders. They offer loan approval before you buy. 
Home Loan Express. Ask your realtor or call Carl I. Brown. When you think of, Pink, of Peter Sellers, his Pink Panther films come to mind. And this time around, though, the Pink Panther may be getting a bad reputation. News 5's Bill Rose is here this morning to tell us why. Bill? Bad rep, Roger, for sure. This time out, Hollywood has failed miserably in raising the son of the Pink Panther. Hey! Hey! Ha! That felt good. That felt good line is not something moviegoers are saying. Seems a nerdy gendarme is the son of Jacques Clouseau. I presume you will now change your name. Why? You're Clouseau now. Yes, but I'm also Gambrelli. It's a good name. Gambrelli! You can sing it. Huh? Do you want me to change it? It might be nice. Your father saved my life. Okay. The son is definitely not a chip off the old block. He's not funny and hard to understand, too. No, no, you did not say yes in the van, not yes in the van. You said yes. Yeah. You did not say yes, my van, not yes, the van. You Look. said yes, my van, not yes it in the van. Many of the old faces try to force a few smiles into this arthritic comedy. But even Cato would rather be someplace else. What does it say? You will hire an Oriental family friend. Amazing. It'll be amazing if this movie finds an audience in theaters or when it comes out on video, which will probably be next week. How do you say bummer in French? <laughs> Les bummer, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> on my scale, one to four roses. The son of the Pink Panther gets a not so funny for stinkweed. Pink Panther deserves better than this cheesy fiasco. Oh, it's awful. This is the second time they've tried to make a movie about Pink Panther without Peter Sellers. And right, yeah, they used old outtakes. Did the same thing with Bruce Lee. Remember the karate guy? Sure. Outtakes and it bombed too. Oh, well, producers will be producers. That's right. Thanks, Bill. Uh -huh. Well, what about the weather planner? Sunny and warm, and on your way home, the rush hour, about 104 degrees. Overnight, 87 at midnight, wake up to about 83 in the morning. And again, the high this afternoon should be about 107 degrees. That's your Midday News 5 for this Thursday. Have a great afternoon.